Well, hello, everybody. I am the warm-up act for Elon, who um, unfortunately had a little trouble landing, or, or maybe that's a SpaceX thing. I get confused. Anyway, our story tonight begins 4.6 billion years ago when the solar system was made. Now, have you ever been to a construction site? And like all over the place, there's like little sawed off chunks of two by four and bent nails and chunks of concrete. Well, when, you made, when the solar system was made, there was no one there to sweep up. And as a result, there's all of these asteroids, which are out there. Of course, you're familiar with the planets. But in between the planets are tons of rocks, some almost the size of a planet, some down to a grain of sand. We call them asteroids. So that's the way it was 4.6 billion years ago. Well, then in, 2000, in 1908, something amazing happened that no one heard about for years. Uh, there was an enormous explosion in a place called Tunguska, which is right where that red dot is. And it turns out nobody really cared. And they didn't care because no one lives there. This is actually the population density in the year 2000. It was even less in 1908. No one was there. Maybe there was an itinerant reindeer herder who was killed, which we can feel terrible about. But years, years and years and years go by. Uh, people knew something happened because the noise was heard 1,000 miles away. Um, unfortunately, this was part of Russia. Russia kind of had other fish to fry during that period of time. They had one revolution after another. It was terrible. And it wasn't until 1927 that people got there and they found scenes that looked like this. They said, hmm, something knocked the trees down. Well, then they kept going in a circle, and all the trees were like pointed out radially from this one place. Um, three, four hundred square miles of trees like this. And they didn't really know what caused it. Uh, it got very little attention. The interesting thing about this is we now believe that an asteroid hit Earth then. And <laughs> as luck would have it, it hit Earth in the one place we could ignore it. So this is the wake up call for us that we kind of hit the snooze button and went back to sleep on. Uh, if it had hit anywhere in the United States, if it hit in Europe or the populated parts of Asia, the entire 20th century would have been about this horrific disaster and how there was death from the skies and so forth, but didn't happen that way. Even hitting in the ocean would have been way more notable than what happened. Okay, well, things went along until 1980. And uh, two people, actually a father and son team, a physicist and a geologist, had this crazy idea. Maybe it was an asteroid impact that killed the dinosaurs. Now, I was a graduate student in physics at Princeton in 1980. And I was in the second row of their talk, which was the first public talk they gave, telling the world, hey, maybe an asteroid killed the dinosaurs. And while I was sitting there, I thought, hey, this is super cool, but it means that it's going to happen again. All right? If it happened once, there, in fact, it's probability one something like this will happen again. You just don't know quite when. Well, then in 2015, some nice people from the B612 Foundation came to see me. They wanted to talk about this. This is their Sentinel spacecraft, uh, which is designed to find asteroids that might hit Earth. And you say, well, what could happen if an asteroid hits Earth? Well, these same nice people made this horrific film. So watch closely. Here's the rock. It's looking kind of cool, but kind of harmless. Comes over a beautiful summer day. And kaboom. Okay. This could spoil your whole day. Now, the first thing you might wonder is, how come an asteroid explodes, right? It's not a bomb or something. Well, it kind of is. Uh, so at my company, we do all kinds. Oh, here's another one. Sorry. This is Chelyabinsk. Now, this is also in a crazy part of Russia, but in 2013. And this is a dash cam. <laughs> so, 
So uh, that broke a million windows. It sent 1,000 people to the hospital. It didn't cause much damage because it came in about 18 degrees above the horizon. Now, here's a, a nerd trick you might not know. Your hand at arm's length subtends about 10 degrees. So 18 degrees above the horizon, as you line the bottom of your fist up with the horizon, you go up that. That's coming in at a very glancing blow. And because it was coming in at this glancing angle, it exploded very high in the atmosphere. If it had come in straight down in the city of Chelyabinsk, it would have killed a million people. So again, there was a possible wake-up call, but we slept through it again. Now, why do these things explode? As I was saying a moment ago, they're not bombs, are they? Well, they kind of are. Now watch this. So this is a cool demo that we made at my company. We made a cannon that accelerates ping pong balls to Mach 2.3. <laughs> and I'd like to say this was for super serious reasons, but really it was because it was cool. But here's a frame from that video. It turns out the kinetic energy that is in the, the ping pong ball is so high that it actually reached temperatures of thousands of degrees at the point of impact. Now, there's not much mass in a ping pong uh, ball, so it, it just it, you know, punches a hole through the paddle, but not that much happens. It's that kinetic energy that is what does all the damage. And that's because Earth has got lots of gravitational attraction, things orbit the sun, they go really fast. Uh, Jeff Bezos wants to put factories in space, um, but, you know, if you printed my cookbooks in space and, like, they dropped one, it would take out a small town. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you, you got to wonder. Okay, so, this is why things go bang. It's because of kinetic energy. Now, this is a, a, a Mach 2. These things coming in are probably Mach 20, Mach 100, maybe even faster. Now, these nice people from B612 wanted me to give them money. And many of you in the room have had people come and say, hey, why don't you, you've been so successful, why don't you share some of that success? Usually they say give back, but it turns out asteroid people don't say that because you didn't actually get it by taking from asteroids. Um, now, and you might say, well, how do we deflect this, these asteroids? How do we prevent this from happening again? And Given our political season, I'm just going to have to say, Mr. Trump, we're not going to build a wall there. <laughs> okay? It's just not going to work. Uh, we're not going to build that other wall either, but, but in this case, we can't do it, but we'd like to find them. Well, it, the, the B612 people are telling about their project, Sentinel, about a $250 million satellite. But I started quizzing them about the physics, about why you find that, and what I discovered is there's four projects, each one of which is going to find lots of asteroids, each one of which, one of them is funded, the others are not funded. And the thing is, each of these groups has a simulation, and they all show the same thing, that their project is best. And the reason for that is they didn't kind of talk to each other, so uh, I talked to all of them, and this wound up becoming kind of crazy, and I wrote this really long paper, which is published in the Proceedings of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, where I compare all of these telescopes. Uh, <clears throat> so in the process of doing that, I noticed that one of the projects made this big physics error about something called Kirchhoff's Law. Now you might say, what the hell is Kirchhoff's Law? And, oh wait, here's, <laughs> here's a little more of this. Here's one of the other projects in EOIs. OK, click. They wrote lots of big papers, lots and lots. So they screwed up something called Kirchhoff's Law. Now, if you've ever been in a teppanyaki bar, you know what this is like. In teppanyaki, in fact, you have a polished chrome surface. That's because emission and reflection are commensurate. If that surface was black, you couldn't stand to sit there. Well. This one thing led to another. Uh, oh, by the way, this Kirchhoff's Law is also why toast burns really easily. I'm writing a 2,500-page book on bread, so that's where this comes from. <laughs> Asteroids, 
are kind of pieces of crap, and yet you model them as spheres, that causes a lot of errors. And to, I'm gonna, we're going to skip past this because I'm running out of time. Here was one of the tables in, in a scientific paper. And if you look at that column called D, you notice that some of those things all have zeros at the end, but other ones don't. Well, that's because I discovered the ones with zeros at the end actually were copied exactly from an earlier paper. That's like kind of an oops. Um, so I wrote another big paper. Oh, yeah, the odds of this happening are a Google squared, but that's like the other kind of Google, not the one you know, um, which is you know, 10 to the 210th. There's a lot of zeros. <clears throat> so last week, my paper was posted on a, on a scientific website. It's also been submitted for peer review. It's 110 pages long. I recommend it highly. <laughs> um, and here's a simulation that we made. Basically, every, all of the asteroids that are in red are way, way larger than those people thought they were by up to a factor of 10, in mass a factor of 100. The blue ones are smaller than they thought. So it's kind of a big deal. Now, this led to a lot of consternation at NASA, and I got this. Um, I never had a, uh, a life list item you know, or a bucket list item have NASA issue a press release only about you, but I should have. <laughs> now, it would be better if it had been a positive press release about me, <laughs> but it's not the worst case because, you know, they could have left me on Mars or something. Which, of course, wouldn't be so bad, because really, really, he could just get a ride from Elon. Um, I can't wait to hear his talk, because I'm fascinated to hear how a man who's built this amazing robotic factory that builds self-driving cars wants to send people to Mars. Um, also, Elon is really worried about AIs taking over, and I have a plan. If the AIs get uppity, we give them Mars. <laughs> okay, it turns out that there's not much oxygen, so there's no rust. Machines hate that. <laughs> so the, uh, the bottom line here is, since my paper came out, lots of other scientists have contacted me and saying, hey, I thought there was a problem, but I didn't raise my hand, because science has bullies. And standing up to bullies is really hard. Uh, they can ridicule you, as they have been with me. They can block your students' careers. They can block your papers from publication. And so scientists are very conservative about calling bullshit about things. But I am not. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>